Heavy traffic going through Tel Aviv in rush hour. This is a good opportunity to share with you some thoughts about what happens in the country recently. Everything is somehow related to the pandemic, obviously. It looks like it catches most of everybody's attention, including the news media, and for a good reason. The race for the vaccine started now, who will get it first? And we are being told that Israel is in a very good position because we made a deal with Moderna um, about half a year ago that we will have priority. So we'll see. It looks that this is the only thing which is really going to bring everything back to normal. Meanwhile, life goes on. And here in Israel, we are facing a situation that we are familiar with. But sometimes, due to the unusual circumstances, it's becoming more extreme than usual. We don't have gangs in Israel, or nothing like that you can compare to the gangs in some big cities in the US of A. But in the Arab society, there is something called the Hamula. Hamula will be the extended family, like a small clan. In most cases, uh, people live in the same area as well. So you have those neighborhoods that each one is occupied by a certain family. And we can speak about hundreds, sometimes even thousands of people. If you check with an Arab in the country about his loyalty, loyalty goes not to the country, not even to the faith sometimes, it goes to the clan. The problem is that these clans are acting very violently, it was always the case, but recently things are getting worse and worse. Whenever Israel tries, through its authorities, to try to maintain law and order, like for example sending the police in to try to police the Arab towns and communities, usually it's been rejected by the locals and there's a lot of opposition to that. Now the members of the Arab parties in the Knesset, the members that are supposed to represent the needs of the Arabs in Israel, who are Israelis, and they make about 20% of the population, in most cases are more busy to represent the Palestinian side, to show absolute solidarity to the Palestinian cause, and the Arab in Israel do feel that their own delegates do not represent them right. So there was a lot of discontent among the Arabs vis-a-vis -vis the members of the parliament, and only recently we begin to see some members of the parliament who are coming from the Arab uh, circles of the country being more concerned about improving the Arab way of life and representing the people and not that much to speak about Israel as an enemy and to side with the Palestinians. That would be the case for a long time. Whenever people try to figure out why the Arab society is so violent, and we do speak about a violent society, and you bring up the issue of the Arab culture, the Arabs are standing on the back feet, screaming, yelling, that there's nothing wrong with the culture. It's something that Israel is to be blamed with. And they say that the police is not trying hard enough to collect the illegal weapons. Let me give you some data, which is not very easy to find in the country, because it's not PC. But once you are PC, that will guarantee that you never start dealing with a problem, because you basically ignore that. You pretend that the situation doesn't happen because you don't want to offend anybody. How can you correct it if you never admit that there is a problem? Only 20% of the population are responsible to more than 45% of the car accidents in the country. 22 women were murdered in Israel in the family since the beginning of the year. 16 of them are Arabs. Once again, the Arabs only make 20% of the population. There's a term called uh, murder in the family or murder because of the family's honor. I can't even think about the right translation here, which is not something that the Jews will do or not something that Christians will do. And therefore, the Arab Muslim society is acting more violently. And whenever you bring that up, that this is simply something that education should be involved and maybe people will have to take care about the kids more closely, there's always a cry out in the country because we are patronizing the Arabs and who said that the Jews are better. Well, the Jews may be not better on that level, but once you look at the data, you look at the information out there, you can clearly see that we speak about a very violent way of life. And therefore the options are not that many. And without having the Arab cooperation, number one, admitting that there is a problem. And the problem is not state authorities that do not collect the weapons why do you accumulate weapons and then you mission to begin with? That's how you solve problems in the Arab world. And look at the Middle East. 
the way to solve the problem is not through calm negotiations or shaking hands. It's violent. It's always violent. And therefore, a population that comes to this way of thinking will do whatever possible to get as much weapons as they can. Every now and then in the Arab communities, and a few days ago, it looks like a battlefield. You speak about those clans fighting against one another by using rifles and using machine guns, and it's just amazing to see. You're speaking about communities which are very close to Israel's center. The population is exclusively Arab, and there was a war going on. And whenever you try to maintain law and order and you need the local cooperation, they refuse to do so. So we speak about the group that makes part of the Israeli population, which is almost like a state within a state. Their own leaders will admit there is a problem, but they will never admit that the problem is something that is called the Arab civilization. And as long as you're not willing to admit that and try to change that from day one and educate the kids on a more peaceful way of life, it's not enough for the state to send the police officers in to collect the weapons. If you're coming from this mindset, you will get weapons and you will solve the problems not by negotiations and not by discussions, but by murdering one another. And therefore, we speak about part of the state of Israel and we are responsible and we are sovereign as well. But whenever you try to do something and dare to speak about the Arab culture and the Arab civilization, there is nobody to talk to. Nobody's willing to admit on the Arab side, yes, we have a problem, yes, it is a matter of education, and yes, with the help of state authorities, we may reduce the percentage of this terrible violence, not to zero, but you look at the data right now, it's absolutely horrible. 22 women were killed, 16 Arabs, and in most cases, it's usually a husband that murders his wife, or a father that murders his daughter because she dated somebody he did not approve to. It's the 21st century, for goodness sake. And if Israel wants to be really a light for the nation, so to speak, that will include all Israelis, including the Arabs. Now we know the neighborhood. The neighborhood is very violent. Look what happens in the Middle East. But we think that we are better than that. When we say we, it's not the Jews in Israel. It's not the Arabs in Israel. It's Israelis. And therefore, before we'll have recognition, among the Arab leaders, that they have a problem that not only the state can solve, but they need to work very hard to educate a new generation on matters or try to resolve issues not violently, it's not going to be a success. So it's not a new thing, and uh, it's every now and then surfaces, but to see a gunfight, not between two, three people, but dozens of people participating, and the town center looks like a battlefield, it's absolutely amazing that such thing can happen in a country like the state of Israel in the 21st century. I just want to wish you all the best to all of you. Stay safe, practice social distancing, and make sure that you're safe. It looks like there is a light in the end of the tunnel, and everybody speaks about vaccines. It's going to be a struggle now. Who is going to be the ones to use them? And yes, we speak about American companies that are committed to uh, distribute that in the U.S. first, but they also signed agreements, and many people paid a lot of money, countries, to try to push their position to be first in line, also to get the vaccine. Here in Israel, we have our own institution, a little bit behind because we started later, and they say that the Israeli vaccine will be ready in a few months. We are starting phase three now in testing the vaccine, and maybe we'll learn from the others' uh, companies' mistakes, maybe improve it, maybe storing it would not require such unique equipment as it does right now. May the God of Israel richly bless you all.